I just wanted to bring you a real quick video, something that I was discussing again on the Mark Bell podcast. And, you know, I know that we had talked a little bit or maybe even a lot of bit about some of the things that you can't touch, taste, smell, hear, or see. All right. And <clears throat> some people will regard that as a little bit too mystical. And because you're not working with the body and working with fascia the way that I am, I wouldn't expect you to take it for what it's worth or take it at face value. So I ended up digging up this article called The Awareness of the Fascial System in the National Library of Medicine. And we're going to go over just a couple of things here to maybe strengthen the case for what I was talking about and help you guys understand just really how truly incredible your body is. And there's a lot more at stake when we're looking at working with tissue in the human body than what we're being led to believe, okay? A lot of people think like, oh, you know, I can just take some aspirin, I'm gonna be okay, maybe I'll just put this brace on my knee or my elbow and everything's fine. Well, it goes a little bit deeper than that. And you can see right over here, even in the key words, we got fascia, fascial system, quantum physics, okay? It's going to be one of the most important pieces that we're going to talk about today. But in the abstract, they start off, the authors start off by saying, fascia is a cacophony of functions and information, a completely adaptable entropy complex. The fascial system has a solid and a liquid component acting in a perfect symbiotic synchrony. Each cell communicates with other cells by sending and receiving signals. This concept is a part of quantum physics, and it is known as quantum entanglement. A physical system cannot be described individually, but only as a juxtaposition of multiple systems, where the measurement of a quantity determines the value for other systems. Okay. Fascial continuum serves as a target for different manual approaches, such as physiotherapy, osteopathy and chiropractic. Let's even throw in a little bit of body work there too, okay? Cellular behavior and the inclusion of quantum physics background are hardly being considered to find out what happens between the operator and the patient during a manual physical contact. Hmm, sounds a little bit like what I do. The article examines these topics. According to the author's knowledge, this is the first scientific test to offer manual operators new perspectives to understand what happens during palpatory contact, a fascial cell has not only memory, but also the awareness of the mechanometabolic information it feels. And it has the anticipatory predisposition in preparing itself for alteration of its natural environment. So that's basically saying that if I'm working on you, your fascia can feel mine. Your fascia can interpret the information that my body has. And this is one of the reasons why I say it's really, really important that you go to a practitioner or a body worker that you like, okay? Maybe even somebody that you look up to, maybe even somebody that becomes your friend. A lot of my clients are also very good friends. If you know, like, and trust that person, your body is going to be more apt to change through this quantum entanglement, through the quantum field and quantum physics, all right? So you can go ahead, I'm gonna link this in the notes, okay? But you can go ahead and read. It gets a little dicey, it gets a little dense, okay? One of the main things that I wanted to go through over here, changes in cell behavior in cases of mechanical stress, a cell communicates with other cells by sending and receiving signals, okay? This concept is part of quantum physics and it is known as quantum entanglement. A physical system cannot be described individually, but only as a juxtaposition of multiple systems in the measurement of a quantity determines the value for other systems. According to the quantum theory, each element has a non-hierarchical form 
of organization and it only responds when necessary. Okay, so when we look at a book like Jean-Claude Gimberteau's The Architecture of Human Living Fascia, he says in there that they tried many, many times to provide algorithms as to how fascia moves. And what we ended up finding out was that every single time, even under the same load or even under the same mechanical stress, fascia arranges itself differently, okay? Think about that for a second. Every time you blink your eyes, fascia is arranging itself differently. Every time you move your mouth and your tongue and your jaw, fascia is moving itself or arranging itself in a different manner, all right? It's unthinkable, but this is what your body does. It's never doing the same thing twice, okay? It's always doing the same thing for the first time, all right? We're gonna get to another area under the microtubules. Let me see here, I'm gonna highlight it for you guys. They're talking about electromagnetism, okay? So we're looking at electromagnetism here and I will go ahead and highlight it. Electromagnetism is associated with another law of quantum physics, the non-local entanglement. When two cells or molecules are intact, are in contact, this connection creates an unbroken microbiological link. In this way, every cell is aware of what happens to another cell no matter how far away. During a morphological change, the energy released by MAPS, okay, um, MAPS are kind of like a stable network. They're called motor proteins, um, and they're, they're a stable network that uh, works in the muscle, okay, so everything is working together. During a morphological change, the energy released by MAPS and by other cellular structures is minimal or quantum. Okay, so once again, if I touch your toe, your frontal lobe is feeling that or your ear lobe is feeling that. If I touch your right arm, your left arm is taking note. So is your leg. So is every single cell in your entire body. This is why it's important that we treat the entire body when we look at pain. We're not just working on your quad not just working on the glute, not just working on back pain or knee pain or shoulder pain or elbow pain, okay? The entire body is suffering in some respect. So we're gonna get down here to the conclusion. The fascial system supports, protects, evolves, and connects the human body. It can be divided into solid and liquid fascia, closely interlinked without interruption between the different components making the subdivision of the fascia into layers unnecessary. Healthcare professionals such as medical doctors and physiotherapists have different clinical tools for patient assessment, including palpation. The touch meets the skin as the first fascial tissue, but the resulting cell deformation can get deeper and it can reach the DNA of different cell tissues. The morphological deformation of the cellular components starts numerous mechano, metabolic, and electromagnetic messages. This information will affect the entire body structure as the palpated area and the remaining non-palpated tissues. The, the mechanisms that allow cells to communicate with each other are based on the principles of physiology and quantum physics. The article reviewed these scientific concepts to understand the importance of palpation in the clinical setting and the complexity of cellular behavior, not completely understood. Further research and studies are needed to implement our knowledge of two fundamental sciences, biology and physics. So there you have it, guys. This article this research article was written in 2018. I was just on Mark's podcast a couple weeks ago. It's 2022. And this is something that I've been working with for a very long time, almost 10 years now, okay? I know that it might sound mystical. I know that it might sound woo-woo, but 
Really what I feel the missing link here is the understanding of scalar waves, okay? And I'm gonna make a video coming soon to go a little bit deeper into this topic. I really want you guys to go down the rabbit hole with me. I want you guys to understand that true body work, getting fashion to move, goes far beyond what you learned in massage school, what you learned in any of your certifications, okay? It goes far beyond grasping. It goes far beyond prolotherapy. It goes far beyond doing little balance, little balance exercises on a Dynadisc, okay? It goes so far beyond that that we can even include your intention in working with the people you are working with, okay? I know that sounds nuts, and I know some of you might be like, this guy's off his rocker, okay? But when you are working with somebody, your intention matters more than you think about how you are working with that person and what you are working on, okay? The message is not solely being sent by your fingers, by your palm, by your forearm or your elbow, okay? Your message is being sent through your intention and how you feel that day and how much you care about your job, okay? All of that stuff, even how you feel about the person you're working on, all right? All of that stuff matters. It's not just what you learned in the textbook, okay? It's not trying to find the next little gimmick gadget, <clears throat> okay? I have a DMS in my office. That thing cost me $3,000. I use it like once a month, okay? If that worked the best with releasing fascia and muscle tissue, every single person that came in here, I just run it on them for an hour over their entire body, okay? But it doesn't work. Why? Because it comes down to a lot more than just a really large or heavy percussion instrument, all right? I think I rammed my point home. Sorry if I elaborated a little bit too much, but like I said, I'm gonna link this article down below in the video notes. Go ahead and check it out and uh, leave some comments. Tell me what you think.